the spirit man is the candle of the Lord, such all the inward parts of the belly. I was said last week that that part is talking about is your human spirit. All right, second one, Romans chapter 8, 14 to 16. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you a son of God? Verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Have a Father. But sustain the Spirit itself, bear it witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And I explained those two spirits even last week. Now, Genesis 1 26, the very book of the beginnings. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the head, and over the cattle and over all the earth. And over every creepy thing that creepeth of the earth. The key words in that verse that I want to emphasize for the purpose of this teaching is that God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Today, how we're teaching on. Uh, no, don't worry, I didn't follow what you put out. Today, I'm teaching on understanding guidance by the Holy Spirit. Understanding guidance by the Holy Spirit, or what you can call on that understanding guidance by the inner witness, by the inner witness. But last week we spoke about the human spirit, guidance by the human spirit, and two Sundays, two Sundays ago we spoke about guidance by our dreams and the dangers thereof, so today we are speaking about guidance even by the Holy Spirit. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, thank you for the entrance of the word, give light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we come today to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of ready writer, and I write the word of life even upon the springs of pen. Thank you, God, because today we all shall be better people after hearing your word. I ask, O God, that our, for our ears will open and will hear your voice succinctly, clearly, and expressly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of a living God. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. Yeah. You can have your seat in God's presence. <laughs> Understanding. Guidance by the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, Understanding guidance by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Listen, understanding is pivotal. Scripture says, Understanding is the wellspring of life to them that have it. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 22. Proverbs 16 and verse 16. Scripture told us that. Wisdom is better than gold, and understanding better than silver. Bible also told us in 4-5 of the book of Proverbs, Scripture says, get understanding. Get understanding. And then 4-7, Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. 4-7 of the book of Proverbs, say wisdom is the principal thing. And in all your things, get understanding. Therefore, today we want to get understanding on the way, the manner in which the Holy Spirit speaks. You see, this is one of the most important part of your Christian life and your Christian experience. Therefore, today we want to know, I want to begin to unlock the thing about speaking concerning the person of the Holy Ghost. So let's go back to the book of the very beginnings. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Scripture told us that God said, let us make man in our image, in, the, in our image, in our likeness. And Bible told us in 27, 28 of the book of Genesis, that God didn't just say that. God followed up in doing what he said. That means you and I are created in the image of God. And when I started speaking, I think last week, I made you understand that, that the nature and the likeness of God that you are created, that you are created in, it's not your flesh, it is not your soul, it is your spirit. It is your human spirit that is created in the likeness of God. And that means, therefore, that inside of everyone seated before me is a nature that is of God, that carries the essence of God, that carries the life of God, that functions and that can speak and that can interact exactly the way God is. And that is your spirit. That's not your flesh, that is also not your mind. Actually, 
like God. You are like God in your spirit. Your spirit is the duplicate of God. A duplicate of another. A photocopy of God is what you carry even in your spirit. Therefore, I want to say certain things that God said to me. You see, God's original plan was that you functioning through your spirit was enough. God's original plan wasn't that God will come into us. God's original plan was that God will speak to us through our spirit and that we will also be able to connect to God without God coming into us. But when sin came, flesh, the flesh revived. Our soul became active. It became the organ by which we were led and we were guided. Our mind. And our spirit was mortified to God. That means our spirit died to God. How? Because man disobeyed and sinned in the garden. So, initial plan of God was that you and I will just function and connect and relate to God through our spirit. And God being a spirit will come in the cool of the day like he did in the garden of Eden. And because sin had not because the flesh had not been revived, because they were not living by their soul, when God came into the garden of Eden, God was spirit, God was spirit, they also were spirit beings. Because they were fully spirit, their flesh was dead, their flesh was not alive, their soul was not active, so they could interact with God, spirit to spirit. But something died like God promised. He said, the day you eat of this, you eat of this food, you will die. Something died. Their spirit died. So when God came in the cool of the day, God could no longer interact with them as he used to. Why? Because the network, the master that was supposed to be in them to connect with the spiritual had been deadened because of sin. So the word before it, before man sin was as much material, physical as it was spiritual. So when God came, because they were spirit beings, they could relate with him. But now they can no longer relate with him. Why? Because something had died in them. I perceive that in that time when the angels even descended and ascended, they would probably know that there are angels here. Because their spirit was active, was alive. Their mind was not there to reason out things. Now, when you see an angel even physically, you'll be telling your mind will tell you, you'll be doing your aspects. Am I saying well? Why? Because your mind has been trained to ask questions. Your mind has been trained to say why. Therefore, because of what had happened, Bible told us that God had to put a measure of himself. In the Old Testament, God put a measure of himself, which is what you call the anointing, upon men, so that they can function and do things, and they can connect with the spiritual world. But after Jesus died, the only begotten of the Father, man returned to the original formation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That word used there is the Greek word thesis. And that word says that you have returned to the original formation. So because you are in Christ, you and I have returned to the original formation. What is the original formation? It was the formation that was not deformed. That formation you had, that form you had, that form, that nature you had before sin came. Your spirit now is therefore alive to God. But the problem is that you are still not that man in the Garden of Eden. Therefore, even when God wakes you up, you just believe that it was a nightmare that woke you up. You can't believe it's gone. Why? Because there's a difference between you and Adam. The difference between you and Adam is that according to your age, that is the training of your mind. Some people's mind have been trained for 25 years. Some people's mind have been trained for 35 years. So they have lived all their life, been guided and led by them for 35 years. Now the spirit is sensing things and is telling them things, they cannot believe it. They cannot even hear it. They say, I thought. They say, something just told me. I, I, I feel so, I feel I should not have gone. Now all of those things are wrong, but the problem is that man has to now train his spirit to meet up with the training of his mind. You see how far you would have to go, especially if you read the course like psychology. <laughs> so because of that problem, the problem of you are revived, you are born again, your spirit is 
eternal life. God knows that now there is a problem. Your body sense, smells, hear, it has become so much a trouble. So even if God comes, your body, it has to first of all go through your body. It's, it's a difficult thing. So God still wanted communion with man, and so God decided to stay on inside of man. So God now has bypassed your mind, he has bypassed your body, and is now staying in touch with your spirit. But when God still gives you information, he gives you information in the realm of the spirit, so your spirit gets things. I think I'm speaking stuff that I had to hear. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So now when God gives you information, he gives you information in your spirit. But the problem now is that though God has moved in so that he can talk to your spirit, you still have to do the interpretation in your mind. And your body still has to work it out. That is why the Bible says you should renew your mind. God cannot do anything about that. It is your responsibility. The more you renew your mind in the word of God, the more you will be able to follow the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit. You see, I can preach about divine guidance and hearing God from now till next year. If you do not get the foundations right, there's nothing we can do. And what is the foundation? The foundation is knowing and understanding the word of God. Because that is what will affect your mind. So that you will be able to decipher the leading of the Spirit of God. And that's very key. God has solved the problem of communion with man. Because if he's still on the outside, he has to talk to you and you will hear it with your senses. And you can say, I, I think I'm getting mad. And, and there are many voices in the world. You say, ah, something is wrong with me. But now he has moved in. So if when he speaks, he doesn't speak to your mind. He doesn't speak to your body, he speaks to your spirit. But your mind does the work of interpretation. I see you need to keep this very close to you because even when you are going to check what you think you hear from God, you are still going to check it to the place of your mind. Therefore, reading the word of God is not an option for a believer, it's a necessity for living. God being on the inside now has two implications for the believer. The first one is that by their spirit, you know God is on the inside, he's in the spirit. By the spirit, the first one is that you can search out the mind of God. By your own spirit. That's what we taught last week. Is that not so? I want to encourage you. If you don't, if you are not here last week. I want to encourage you to get the message. If you go to the back, they will tell you how you can, or they will even give you the message themselves. So the first thing they will give you free. Don't worry. Don't think about buying. Just get go with your phone. You get it. So the first thing you need to do is that you need to understand that because God lives in your spirit, you have access to the spirit of God through your human spirit. Your human spirit can now search out. What God has in mind. Because no man knows the things of another man. Whatever she is thinking right now, I don't know it. But whatever Ruth is thinking is not eating from Ruth's spirit. But So, it, Ruth does not have to say, what, what, what was I thinking? No, she, she just knows. So, what God is thinking, the mind of God is known to the Holy Spirit also. Now, the Holy Spirit is now on the inside of Ruth. So what human spirit, the spirit of root does, is to search out that matter. And that's why we say there's a spiritual Google in every believer. So he just searches out a matter. That's the first thing. Oh, what is God's mind? Even concerning where I should stay after school. Uh, your spirit will just keep searching it. Keep searching it. Keep searching it. Uh, I just keep searching it. I must search it. It's just like GPS. Just keep searching the location. Until the time comes, it just pop it up in your spirit. Number two, you can commune with the Holy Spirit, you can, the, the Holy Spirit can now speak directly to your spirit. First one is you searching out. The second one is God speaking to your spirit. You will say, ah, I have a word from God. You hear people say, I have a word from God. I have a word from God. They are telling you, I have a sentence from God. I have a sentence from God. It's a more deeper dimension of leading than the human spirit leading. Bible told us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, that the Spirit speaks out expressly. And when we talk about the word expressly, we said it means clearly. So the Spirit speaks clearly, expressly. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Bible says, as many as are led. How would we be led? We will be led by His voice. That's how He will lead us. 
And then verse 16 of the same Romans says, The Spirit bears witness. The major difference between us searching out a matter and the Holy Spirit saying it to us is that one is, comes with a voice, with a clear voice, a statement, a sentence. The other one may just come with a knowing. A knowing. I can't back it up. I just know I should not travel. But when it is a voice, it says, when you travel and you die. You know that one is clear. It says, travel and die. So I sit down at home. You even go out that day. That's a clear sentence because you don't know what traveling means. Whether it's crossing road, so just sit down at home. But that other one, you just know it. This one comes with a sentence because when God speaks, it speaks clearly. You see, today in continuing with the teaching, I, I, I want to say very clearly to us. Because you see, many people, are, we believe, I believe by now that God speaks. But I've had many people who have also said God, God does not speak to us again at this time. So there are people who believe in doctrines and say, whatever God will say and has to say to man is in the Bible. Just live by the Bible. In that way, they negate, they negate and neglect the Holy Spirit. I want to say to you today that that's a very dangerous theology. I'll give you a practical story, example to back it up. There was a man called Mark Rutland. Mark Rutland was a minister, but he was also... He is a minister, but at that time, he was also the president of Southeast University in Lakewood, Florida. He was in a plane and he was traveling back after a time of administration in Los Angeles. He was traveling back and um, he sat down beside a man. And the man wanted to have conversation. I don't know whether he had sat in a car with somebody who just wanted to have a conversation. And at that time, Mark Rutland was not feeling very spiritual. He was very tired, so he didn't want to talk. But this guy just wanted to talk. So this guy was just talking, asking questions. Ah, what do you do? Where are you going? Ah, where are you going? He said, I'm a, I'm a minister and, a, and the president of a Bible college. Ah, the man said, yes. And he started talking because he was a minister. So he felt we have connected. So the man started talking and saying stuff. And then the man said, and then when he noticed that the man was, that Mark Rutland was from a Pentecostal denomination, and he was not. He was under the nomination. He changed his volume and his voice and he wanted, he started being argumentative. And the man said, can we just take our bottle of Coke, or pet Coke and just leave it there? I'm tired. He said, no, 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 I know, I know. I just want to ask you a question. Because you see, your denomination believes that God speaks. But God does not speak anymore because the canonization of the Bible has been closed. That means that there are no more books in the Bible. There is no revised edition of the Bible. You won't see Revelation chapter 40. It's closed. So he said, why then is God speaking? He said, so how do you people say God speaks? God does not speak. Mark Rutland said, I will ask you a question. If I ask you that question, will you answer me? He said, yes. He said, are you called of God to preach? Are you called to preach? The man said, yes, I'm called to preach. I believe I'm called to preach. He asked him a question. Who called you? you know, if God does not speak then, who called you? Mark Rutland said the man turned his face towards the window and he was set there to the end of the journey. What does that tell you? That you see, we can all say God does not speak, but we cannot, if we are being truthful, we, and we look at our life, you will see his landmark, his footprints, and the fingerprint of his speaking, even to us. So without a doubt, we serve a God that speaks. So today I want to start by looking at the book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. Acts 13 and verse 2. Bible says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, who said, can you speak to me? The Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work where to I have called them. That tells you that there is an atmosphere that sparks revelation and communications of the Spirit. There is an atmosphere that sparks communications. That's why you have to be at a flame. Because that's an atmosphere where God will speak to you. 
there's an atmosphere that sparks communication. The Spirit speaks to us when we live in such a way that God is honored rather than when we are honored. The Bible says, as they ministered, many churches have lost the guiding voice of the Spirit because our sole focus is ministering to men and not ministering to God. The Bible did not say as they ministered to men, as they ministered to the Lord. Can I ask you, are you still ministering to the Lord in your private life? You know, sometimes when you worship, you know you are worshiping yourself. Say, we didn't, that church was not fun today. We didn't really dance. Now that's a ministering to yourself. The problem was that we did, the problem was not that we didn't really worship. No, the problem was that we didn't really dance. Say, that church was not fun today. It's not a trans amusement park. It's not, it doesn't look like the mall. We are here to minister to the Lord. And, uh, uh, let me say this also. Because many people have come and they say, no, you know, God has, is not speaking to me. I want to say one thing also. Why God may not be speaking to you is that know it for a truth and a fact that God is not a busybody and God is also not cantacross. He doesn't speak for the purpose and the reason of speaking. Until God can be sure that you will do his will, he will not make his will known to you. Therefore, in the things of the Spirit, possessing a quick sense of obedience is vital. Bible told us, immediately God said anything to Abraham. He did it. Immediately. But when God tells you to do something, first of all, you are fighting with your mind and your body. Is it God? Is it me? Is it me? Is it God? You spent one, one month. Some people have spent one year deciding whether it is them and God. Listen, the Holy Spirit bears witness directly, not with your mind. So when you are asking your mind spiritual things, you are wasting your time. It bears witness. That means it testifies that what you hear is actually from God. How? By bearing witnesses with your spirit, not with your body. I don't feel like it does not come true, say Afo. Say what God told me, I don't feel like I should do it. God said, go and tell that lady. Go and ask her out. She said, I don't, feel, I don't love her. I don't have any feelings for her. Oh. You are still in that realm. Romans 8 is, this thing says, The Spirit bears witness with the Spirit that we are children of God. 1 John 5, 6 to 8 says, And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Now I want to say certain things about the Holy Spirit to us. Number one, it speaks by enlightening or illuminating the Word of God to us. It speaks by enlightening or illuminating the word of God to us. The inner witness, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit, is also the voice of revelation. The scripture will therefore remain to many a blank and lifeless book until they have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I've had many people say, I don't get anything from reading the Bible. Now, you don't start getting things from reading the Bible by reading more of the Bible. No, you develop a relationship with the spirit of revelation, the Holy Spirit. There are times I've read scriptures and scriptures and I didn't get any revelation from them. But as I began to pray in the spirit, which is what I do after I've read scriptures, I give an apportion time to just be and pray in tongues for a few minutes. So that what I have read is still kept, not in my mind, but in my spirit. And as I begin to pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal, begin to broaden, begin to enlighten what I have read even to me. That's the secret of gaining things from the Bible. As you read it, don't just close it and say, I'm done with this today. Oh, to call out. No. No. It's not a tradition you are trying to fulfill. That's why many people have become readers of the Bible, but they have never gotten contacted by the life of the Word of God. There is a life in the Word that changes people. And how does that life come to you? By engaging the spirit of life. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit will quicken. It will make alive what you have read. Ephesians chapter 1, 16 to 17. 
Paul spoke about the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. And then number two, the spirit teaches us things. Listen, the Holy Spirit is a teacher by excellence. I told us last week when people say experience is the best teacher. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Experience is a teacher, but it's not the best too. Because I told us that you can come out of that experience broken, bruised, and wounded for life. Therefore, it is better for you to listen to the Holy Spirit. There are times you don't even know what to do. You do not understand. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit teaches you himself. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 2, 13. Is it coming on screen? We things also we speak, not in what which man's wisdom teacheth, but with the Holy Ghost teacheth. So the Holy Spirit is fundamentally a teacher. It teaches you things. It gives you perspective. You see, I want to say here, and I want you to listen to me carefully. Many believers, I believe, are losing out on the best things of God and the Holy Spirit because they think that the Holy Spirit teaches only spiritual things and scriptures. So when you are reading your Bible, you give room to the Holy Spirit. But when you are faced with a task, a project, a business idea, you do not engage the Holy Spirit because you think it is not a spiritual thing. Bible says the Holy Spirit teaches all things. All. All things. John 14, 26. I like us to read John 14, 26. And it's also in Luke 12, 12. But with the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. What shall he teach you? Can someone say all things? What does all include? All. All includes all. All includes everything. Including chemistry. Including physics. Including an idea, a project, an architectural design, everything. Because what you have is an access even to the treasures of knowledge that built the whole world. That's what you have. The believer is not poor. If he's poor, he's poor by himself. It's an access to riches and funds that you are not making use of. The Holy Spirit is there. It should actually be a plus factor for the believer, but it's the reason why many of us live in mediocrity. The Holy Spirit did not tell me. Because you do not know you can access him for it. Can we see Luke 12, 12? Luke 12, 12. For the Holy Spirit Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. He's a teacher. He will teach you. Somebody say, I have a project to defend. So I have an interview to attend. Jesus said, do not, do not, do not fear. Do not, do not fret. When you get there, he will teach you. Does it mean you will not prepare? No. But if you prepare and they start asking you what you didn't prepare for, you don't have to be jittery. You start smiling because you begin to speak. And you, Have you gotten to a place before? I mean, I've spoken to people before and I left and I said, what did you say? I knew I said so much wisdom. I didn't know where it came from. I said, where was that from? Access. Someone say access. The spirit of truth will teach you. What is truth? Truth is the self-expression of God. Truth is everything that flows from God. Truth is that which is consistent with the mind, the will, the character, the glory, and the being of God. That's what the truth is. Everything that is consistent with the mind, the will, the glory of God. Listen, I've told you, you can begin to access the Holy Spirit for different dimensions of things. We do not want to have a church where people are spiritually strong. We also want to have a church where people are entrepreneurs. Church where ideas come, where innovations come. George Washington Carver. Have you heard of him before? George Washington Carver. He's the guy who was said to make the peanuts butter. Nobody has ever discovered many things that can be made with a peanut. I'm sure Ogafemi here, my Oga here, we know about it. Who has ever made innovations and inventions from peanuts? A year came, they brought him before the Congress in the United States. And, and they asked him a question. They said, Mr. George, can you say that God 
is the one who taught you everything you knew now about peanuts? He said, no. I won't put it that way. He said, I would rather say that God is the creator of the peanuts. I only ask him what it can be used for. And he told me. Everything has its roots in God. Everything has its foundation in God. Therefore, we are not knowing things. We do not have inventions and ideas because we are not asking the right person. Sometimes I just pray. I say, God, teach me about grace. God, teach me about prayer. And I take my pen and I begin to write down what he will tell me. He has woke me up before and said, now I want to teach you certain things on acceleration. And I took a pen and I began to write. I wrote five pages and I stopped. I have certain definitions of grace I cannot even share with you now. You will backslide. You know, there are things you only teach mature believers. Number three, the Holy Spirit reminds us of the word of God. Listen, we live in a world where we soon forget. John 14, 23 says, it will remind you. It will remind you. Your greatest reminder is not your alarm clock. It's not your calendar on your phone. It's the Holy Spirit. Listen, we forget the word of God. We forget things. When we get to place of trials and temptations and challenges, we forget what we need to use to get out. And that's where you need the Holy Spirit. How many of you have stayed before in prayer and you're trying to remember a scripture and you can't get, just get it? You need to channel your energy not into your mind. Bring it forth. Just release yourself to the Holy Spirit. He will bring it to your memory. I remember sometimes last oh God, I was very sick nigh unto death. And I could not do anything. I couldn't even read. When I read, I have bunny eyes. I have headache. I could not hear any music. Because when I hear anything... It's like my heart wants to get out of my body. And I needed faith to get out of where I was. And here was I, the doors of where faith could come was shut to me. Faith comes by hearing, I can't hear. It comes by reading, I can't read. So it was what I had eaten before. And then I now began to channel my energy to the Holy Spirit to remind me of the things I have read. That's why I tell people, don't get into trouble before you read your Bible. Because when the devil will get you, it might get you in such a way it won't allow you to even read the Bible. So you must put the word of God because the witnessing spirit will now help you to remember. How many of you have ever been looking for something you need so much and you can't find it? And then you just sit there and say, Holy Spirit, just help me out. And then you say, check under that drawer. You hear your voice say, check under that drawer. And then you go there and you put it and say, ah, ah. Why, why, why was I this stupid before? Sometimes it will show you a vision. Just remember. You see, it, it touches your memory. You remember how you came inside the house and you put it under that pillow. It reminds you of things. It doesn't just remind you of Bible. It reminds you of all things. Somebody needs to... You see, sometimes we underuse him. Many of us are still using 10% of the Holy Ghost. He wants me to tell you he's available to you. He's available. Keep using. The more you use, the more you find. He's an inestimable glory. You can't finish using him. Inexhaustible. Praise God. Number four, by instructing and guiding us. The witness spirit will lead us by instructing us. Giving us instructions to follow. Romans chapter 8 verse 29. Romans 8 29. Sorry, Act 8 29. My head just worked. Was, ah, what's going on there? Act 8 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, what did he say? Go near and join thyself to this chariot. That instruction was clear. Is that not clear? Very clear. He gave him a clear instruction. And that was what happened also in Acts chapter 10. The Bible told us that God told Peter, the Holy Spirit told Peter, he said to him, go and follow and go to the Samaritans. It was very clear. God told him what to do. And you find that in Acts 10, 9 to 12, 9, 19 to 20. 19 to 20. And that's the final thing, number five, is that the Holy Spirit will reveal the plan of God to us. He will reveal the plan of God for your life to you. How many of you know your life purpose? What you are called to do in this world? Raise your hand. Praise God. We are not trying to uh, 
unshamed people, like people say body shame and all of that. We are not trying to unshame people and purpose shame people. So put down those hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. So realistically, what I'm trying to say to you, if anybody has a life purpose and he knows it, he didn't get it by reading a book. If you go to your home by reading a book, I'm telling you that is a designed and devised purpose, not by God, by you. A book cannot give you your life purpose. Only the Holy Spirit can. And what the Holy Spirit does is that he reveals this to people. Acts chapter 10. No, don't let's go there. Let's go to Acts 8, 29. Acts 8, 29. No, 13.2 of Acts. 13.2 of Acts. I'll get there. Aha. As they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for what? For the work. That word work is purpose. For the work whereunto I have called them. It was clear. How will you know the work he called them? On his way to Damascus. When the light shone upon the part of Saul, the Bible told us uh, that Jesus well, was the Jesus said, I have called him and I will send him as a light to the Gentiles. So you see, the purpose was clear. How do you know your life purpose by the Holy Spirit speaking and revealing it to you? Many times, even without asking God for plans, God reveals it to us. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thought I have towards you, thought of good, not of evil. Psalm 33, verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plan of his heart from generation even unto generation. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Uh, Before I formed you, I knew you. Before you were brought forth, I called and ordained you a prophet even unto the nations. So God calls people. How will you know what the call of God is in your life? Uh, when I say call of God, only you will preach. Uh, the call of God is that which supernaturally you have been endued uh, even to do. You might be an inventor like John Washington Carver. You can be anything. You can be like Thomas Edison. God can call you to do those things. What are you called to do? How would you know your life purpose? Will you just don't sit down and say, take a pen and a book in a quiet place and say, I have called you. You won't make it sound like Reverend George. So you saw me to take my word and remove that one. I've called you to take the integrity of God to the finance institution. Praise God. Emphasizing the importance thereof. Praise God. Now, it sounds good, it sounds genuine, but it is fake. It's 419. It says, come. Why? Because it is he who gave a purpose that we drive it. When you Device a purpose yourself, you will drive it yourself. But if God gives you, you will drive, he will drive it for you. Now, I want to tell us, ah, just, <laughs> I want to tell us the nature of the inward witness. Next week is a flame. After next week, I will not be in town. So I'm telling you on town. I will be around, but I will not preach. So, the vision and then vision and prophecy that remains. I've preached it one Sunday. But not a flame Sunday. If not, we will not go home. Praise God. So let's talk about the nature of the inward witness. The first one, it is, it is more authoritative. When the spirit speaks, it is not suggestive. It is more authoritative than the voice of the human spirit. Your spirit may be telling you, are you sure you want to do that? You can hear your spirit, human spirit tell you, are you sure you want to do that? But when the Holy Spirit talks, you say, ah, if you do that, or, or you hear you dare not do that. See, that's authoritative. It's not, it's not saying, it's not helping you play. Why? Because it's God over your life. It's not going to be having a conversation of, he's telling you, this is what you should do. It's a voice that can be stand and it shows authority. Act 13 too separate unto me. It's not like, hey, you can now choose two people out of you who want to go. No. Separate unto me. Clearly. He made it clear. Act 10. Let's read Act 10, 19 to 20. Why Peter thought on the vision? You know, Peter was saying, me, I, I've never eaten such things before. And the Holy Spirit told him, the Spirit said unto him, behold. That word behold means see. See. In case you are not hearing me, see you. Three men seek thee. 
Why Peter thought, he said, seek three men, seek thee. He said, Arise, authority. Arise, therefore, and get thee down. And go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Thank you, sir. You walk away. Do you understand that? Authoritative. He gave him clearly. When he saw Philip, he said, he said to Philip, join yourself. Straight up. Not a... Uh, uh, all those conversations you have with your woman's spirit. When those spirit talks, it's clear. I remember there was time I was going to make a decision. And I just had, if you do that, you are finished. I mean, I just froze. That was the end. It doesn't, it's not, you know when they say, when, when men say you are finished, you, are, you, you may still be trying, you are not finished. But when God says you are finished, ah, they look at That's the end. No argument, no conversation. Number two, it sounds like an audible voice. Mark my word. I said it sounds like an audible voice. It is not an audible voice, but it may sound to you like an audible voice. I'd wanted us to read 1 Samuel chapter 3, 4 to 10. But time has gone. 1 Samuel chapter 3, 4 to 10. Scripture told us about Samuel and Eli. Eli, Samuel had God. Call him Samuel. He went to Eli. Because he sounded like an audible voice. He thought it was Eli that was calling him. No, you can keep scrolling in four, go to five, keep scrolling, and they can read it and follow through. And he didn't know. And then when he got to Eli, Eli said, I was not the one. If it was audible, Eli too would have had it. And I was like, the next day, when Eli asked him, what did God tell you? If Eli had had it, he would not be asking but to his human spirit, it sounded like it was something somebody else will also hear. So sometimes God can speak loudly in our spirit. You hear say, who said that? Who said that? Can believers hear an audible voice? Act chapter 9 verse 7 answers that question. Act chapter 9 verse 7. This was Saul. When Jesus met him, he saw a light. And the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. They had a voice, but that was not the Holy Spirit, you know. You know that was Jesus himself. So they had. They also had. They calmly had, but they didn't see anything. So men can hear audible voices. I want to advise at this point that you should not look for an audible voice. Who? Many people have looked, prayed, said, God, if that is my wife, I need more assurance. You speak to me clearly. Let me hear. Audible. Let me hear. I will hear like this. Tony, Tony, Tony. That's why I will believe. Oh, God, speak to They are praying and telling God how you will lead them. And they say it's Lord over their life. No, you are the Lord. It's just your servant. Because you are telling him what to do. And so we've had people who now hear demons. Tell them things. Why? Because they were thirsty for voices. And so there are many voices in the world. <laughs> so demons now start, ah, that's what you want. You know, I told you about dreams too. That's what you want. So they now ask Bewa, stand up. Walk. So his man walk. Say, sit down now. I've met people like that in real time. In Tanker here, yeah. real time, not film. Real time. I hear voices. If I don't go anywhere until the voice says, move. Say, sleep now. I sleep. Remember that brother that wanted to run, run mad? What was he hearing? A voice. He had a message. He became very spiritual. <laughs> Same potters are open to me. Potters are open to me. Potters. See all those potters you are hearing? That's what I'm telling you the biblical way. Say, potters are open. Potters are open. They called me from home. He said, man of God, he was in Bible school. I'm telling you, he was running mad. Because his portals were opened. He said, that voice says, you are no longer human. There are witnesses here. He said, you are no longer human. He said, if you caught me now, I have become a beast. He said, he said that's what he told me. And he has me hearing that voice. It's the voice that has been telling him things before that time. So when the voice says, you have become a beast, he believes so. He said, you, have I read Revelation? I mean, so I've read Revelation. I've read Bible through, through. You can't tell me anything that's there that I know, know it's there. I mean, I don't know where exactly where it is, but I know it is in the Bible. I know what it can look like. So have you, I said, I said, I know. He said, there's that beast. He said, I've become that beast. He said, it's a supernatural power. They called me. True life story. They called me from home on a Saturday. 
He said, ha! This was a guy who has trained his mind. He was doing masters. Very brilliant. A born again believer in Bible school. So don't ever think you can't be. That's why you have to be careful. Don't be looking for voices. Some of you, you are not satisfied with your spiritual experience. You want more. Because some preacher somewhere is preaching that you see there are dynamics, uh, dimensions of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I came there. I said, what have you done? They said, he believes so. I said, under God, I will cut you. Under God, I will cut you. So I said, look for a knife. There was no how you will convince him. I said, look for a knife or a cutlass. I will cut the guy. How can you tell me you're a beast in front of me? They said they can't find. They looked everywhere. I gave them money. Go and buy a blade. Come here. He said, you. He said, I cut myself at home. And blood did not come out. I become a beast. I'm telling you. The guy believed so much the voice. How did I know that was not the voice of God? Because he did not agree with the lines of the scriptures. He didn't agree with the spirit and the oneness of the Bible. I didn't do anything. I took blade. I said, I don't know how you cut yourself at home. But where I am, demons don't manifest. If there is blood in your vessel, I jade. One in another game. You know, Mr. Gwenga, you're very gentle somebody. Say, don't cut him too much. I wanted to slash it. I was so angry because they called me from home for one stupid something. I was very angry. I took the blade. I just scrapped the skin. Blood came out. I said, where's the beast? But you know what? Despite that, the guy still kept believing that the voice was real. And he started calling the man who preached the message a demon from the pit of air. Uh, don't call any man of God demon. It is you. When people say they have certain experience, it doesn't mean you should go and look for it. If pastors will be truthful, they will tell you that when we have those spiritual experiences and visions, we are not the one time we are fasting. It was times after we ate from the jam and slept. It was time where we were not even praying so much. Because God chooses to do these things his way. Some people have gone on 40 days dry fasting. I asked them, what did you see? They didn't tell me anything. Have you ever been asking God, is that your wife? And then God starts telling you about your purpose. <laughs> but the day we tell you about your wife, it will be the day you least expect it. That's why you need to always be on point spiritually. I remember sometimes in April 2011, as I was about to lock my door, a hungry training minister locked the door. I was going for, you, won't, you can't see me as hungry that time. They know me. I think faith, yes, very serious faith. We we'll bounce like I locked the door and I was about to go and I had clearly, today you meet your wife. Listen, I thought someone spoke. I looked around. I said, ah. It was clear in my spirit. But I still made jest of myself. If you say yo, because you are going to a wedding, you told yourself you are going to meet your wife. Ah, ah. But after I laughed at myself, it lingered on in my spirit. Because I opened the door back and I started laughing. You know, some people, when they make jest of us, they don't know we are past that level. We laugh at ourselves. So what's your problem? Say, does he speak good English? What, that, would that affect me by now? So I locked the door back. And then, I, 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 and then he kept telling me. He, he, you see, the witness of the Spirit was now witnessing to my spirit. After he had said it, the witnessing now continued. And then I met that lovely lady that day. The rest today is history. You know the history. And we are still working on the history. So you can't know the history. You can you know where we are on the journey. Uh, but you don't know the history. Praise God. Be careful to seek an audible voice. Be careful to seek any voice at all. Just let God lead you. Just submit your life to God leading you. And then number three, he leads in line with the word of God. The Holy Spirit will never lead you to do anything contrary to the word of God. So whatever leading you have received of God, be sure it aligns with the word of God. Many people have had many voices and they ran on those voices. They didn't check with, with God's word. And such word was evil. John 16 verse 13. The Holy Spirit will only lead us by the word. He will lead us uh, in our conduct. Say what he hears, that's what he will tell us. The Spirit of, he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Had Kenneth Egan once say that God led a woman. God, in, in quotes, God led a woman. And the woman said, God led her 
to leave her husband. Say, God said, the time is up with that guy. And let her, led her to another man. That would not have been a problem if the guy was like Minister Gwenga. But leading him to a man like me. Do you understand the difference? Married. So he led, God led him to leave a married home. A, a marriage. And then to go and marry somebody else who is married. And the same word of God says, whatever they are two have, when they have become two, no man should do what? Put asunder. So you, do, you crash two marriages because of one voice. I once had a pastor. I once had it said, and I know concerning a pastor, who God led to change the name of a church. You know, he's a, a pastor over an installation. So God now led him to change the name to his name of his own, the one God gave him divinely. So what it means that God led him to take over the church. And there are things when you hear, you know that's not God. We got still another, we co- God will now do a conversion, a forest conversion of another person's property and give it to you. You see, when people talk about God, you know, ah, is God a thief? Has God started a, scam, a scamming business? God will only lead you in line with his word. How do I test the voice I hear? Tested by the validity of the word of God. Does it align with the letter and the spirit of scriptures? That's it. If it does not agree with it, let it go. That's you probably taking too much wine. Praise God. The Holy Spirit will also speak, number four, to us in words and sentences. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, sitting and reading, and the Holy Spirit told Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. He told him clearly. This is where people said, you hear people say, God said. God said. Some people, are, some people don't like it. They think it's a spiritual thing. You know, it's like a coding language to just deceive ladies when you want to marry them. Say, God said, you are my wife. And many of us don't believe when people say, God said. But it's true. God still needs spiritual brothers. Not carnal ones that you like. Because there's a problem. You want somebody spiritual, but you want him to also like whiskey. How can that work? Say, he can't work. He can't do many things. He can't love more. Is it that you take a whiskey or you take a minister? It's one of the two. We can't combine the two. How can I be reading the Bible and I'll be learning how to twerk? How can I? This one you will pick. Say the guy is only talking Bible with me. He, he, he's only talking Bible with me. He's only, he's only talking Bible with me. And when I say you should sing, he's singing Jesus, lover of my. How, how can I cope in that kind of marriage? He can't sing Rihanna. How can he, he be listening to Rihanna and still be listening to Darlene Zetch? Oh my. Can they walk? So when people tell you God said, relax, because you cannot hear God. Does not mean God is not in the business of speaking to people. Many times it's because of your jealousy and because you have never had God that you think it's impossible. Grow up spiritually. Tell your members, tell your neighbor, grow up spiritually. God still speaks. Many times I go to, I say God said. And I say it boldly. It means something more feel. God told me. Man of God, I told a woman not to go. She went. Has she come to meet you? She's coming. When I, I'm not giving you an idea, if I say God said, I might be telling you, I feel. See, when I feel, <laughs> I'm still in that point of uh, checking or ABC. But when I tell you, that's what he said. If you, some people, I told somebody, I said, Don't marry you. Don't marry that girl. Don't marry that guy. You say, Ah, oh. it's a pastor. I won't mention the name of the church. Say, It's a pastor. <laughs> when the guy duped her, you know how he duped her? They finished their honeymoon. He did honeymoon in redemption camp. Wow. <laughs> you know, when I asked her, I said, are you pregnant? She said, yes. How will you not be pregnant? Honeymoon in redemption camp. How will you not be pregnant? Honeymoon in redemption camp. You can never be barren. In redemption camp. He did honeymoon in redemption camp. They were sleeping there. So the girl said, true life story. The girl looked at the man. He said, we have been here two weeks. He said, let us be going home. He said, let me now tell you something. He said, 
the person I paid accommodation money to, he duped me. There's no house to go to. When she called me, he said, you know, when she finished, he said, I know you told me. Uh-huh. That's why I didn't say anything again. And I said, okay, so what, what do we do now? Kwele? You see, Kwele from there, because this thing has been put there. As a pastor, I can't say, drop the ring and walk away. You will not begin to cope. You know what they call coping? You don't know what they call coping. When you start coping in a marriage, that's what I'm telling you to hear God now. You see, that one is a permanent coping. In fact, it, be, it becomes your third name. You become Ruth Equere coping. So you know that kind of thing. <laughs> God forbid in Jesus' name. Well, I'm trying to say to you that that's what it becomes. There's no going out. You cannot say, I can't go back <laughs> to the way it used to be. You know, and sometimes people say, this thing called marriage. If I write a book, that's the name of that book. This thing called marriage. If you enter wrongly, you are doomed. Even after one yeah, when you go out here, you die. See, no child. They'll say, ah, but he has married before. Go and ask him what happened. Ask him what happened. He said, no, you should let him go and do test, medical test. Ah, one chance, ne? All these sweet talks, let's pray in tongues. Kinamo, shatter. Somebody did that with somebody very close to me, praying in tongues together every Friday. And then gave the person his ring back and got married three months later. You can never know people by the flesh. Paul, Paul said, though we knew Christ after the flesh, now know we him no more. All this preparation, yeah, I'm going to choose. After I finish this, I will now tell you about choosing a life partner. I'll talk about love. See, all this, uh, all this uh, shape, after three children, she still looks like that, like my wife. You married right. But when everything has become scattered, you will now know that those of us who married well, we are good. My wife is getting more beautiful by the day. I tell you, I can show you pictures of her. What happened? We did not look at the things which man look at that. Because though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed daily. And when it gets to a time, the inward reflects in the outward. <laughs> Receive that, brother. Number five. Don't let me get too excited. Number five. The voice of the spirit is very clear. The Holy Spirit's words are not ambiguous. They are lucid and clear. The Holy Spirit will not give you words that are cramped in misery. Somebody said, the Holy Spirit told me this. I can't understand it. Help me explain it. Think of it. The Holy Spirit is not the author of, author of misery. He will tell you clearly. You will understand. You will know. You will get it. The KJV says the Spirit speaks expressly. NLT says now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly. I think I said that in the first message of this series. You need to get that. I said it's the word retos. That's what it means. I want you to get that message. So the Holy Spirit speaks clearly. He won't tell you that may become a wife to you. Or it's an option. What's the meaning of that nonsense? You know, believers go, he said God told me it's an option. I can consider her. God told you that. God has become shop right. Where you just put different kind of mix. And this is pick, 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 mix. This is uh, three crown. So God said, it's an option. Just choose one. Clear. Direct. Where should I stay? God said, anywhere you stay. Portacot is okay. Cardinal is good. Uh, Shokuto is good. That is your mind. That's too much reading. It will tell you, join yourself to that chariot. Abuja, here you come. Go back to Ilorin. It tells you clearly. It tells you, it's not time to leave your learning now. Stay. You get admission this year. You know. It tells you clearly. Like one man came to me and said, my lad, I was laughing. He said, ah, ah, you are laughing, you are laughing. I know. I was laughing. I don't have to believe. It's you he told. He didn't tell me. The person he told is the person who is convinced. It's your told. It's not me. He told you, not me. So me, I just smile. That is what faith does. I'm not supposed to tell you, are you sure? No, I just started smiling. And the man felt that my smiling was like he was not. You know, if you are sure, you had him. When I smile, you smile with me. <laughs> we are smiling for the admission. That's what we are doing. God told you that's your wife. After you have stayed there two months, the guy is saying no, saying no. 
You move around, move around, move around. You have gotten from Iabo, you have gotten to Vivian. And then you come and say, God has said Vivian. I said, when did God leave Yahweh? He said, he just told me he's not going to happen. You know, God told us he's a God of choices. After Vivian, Vivian gave you a show. You have moved around to announce to somebody else. So when I said, I said, I will just tell you, go and try it. We know you are on trials. You are on trial. It's not something you know. So the Holy Spirit does what? Speaks clearly. So before you come and meet me, make sure those things pass. They pass, the, the, you pass those things. It's not ambiguous, it's very clear. It speaks expressly. That's how the voice of the spirit comes. And the way will you hear it from? Your spirit. And it doesn't lastly have to make sense. Abraham, leave your father's house. Doesn't make any sense. When God told me to come back to Rema Chapel in Lonnie, it doesn't make it didn't make any brain at all. When he said ministry, you think I like ministry? And he told me ministry. I told him, God, I can do four things. I put it down. Four things. In case you don't know, four things. Let me do any of these and send money. We can even agree on tight. I will do 50-50. 50-50. God do those people. Let me, let me do this one. And then I was very angry for the fact that I was studious in school. You know, if you had done, you are going to end up in ministry. Why do you read? Why bother? Let me just let my people go. You know those guys let my people just get D D D D D D D D D. I don't have to read to get a D. D D D D D D D. And then we go. I have never used that certificate. I collected it. Uh, don't worry, the man saying here, yeah, your own is coming very soon. Your problem is you have not had God. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remember the first time I collected my certificate, I think last year. That's when I collected it. I, I didn't even go back. They said, Don't worry, they will collect more money inside this. I said, ah, I don't need it. Let them keep it. If it's in their house and it burns, they will produce it. If it's in my hand and it burns, a problem. Let them keep it. So when someone had to do something, I had to get it. That's it. I now went somebody. I now paid. I collected. I looked at the thing. This is what I suffered from. Drop it somewhere. I don't. The way I keep my certificate, my wife does not keep title with me because if I keep it the way she keeps, you know, she's using her own. I'm not using my own. So the way I keep it, I just keep it anyhow. I scan it. Scan it. Was anything you want to happen? Let it happen. Why? Because I don't need it. So when God led me, it didn't make any brain at all. So when you try to legalize. When you try to justify the leading of the spirit by your mind, you will soon be in trouble. I'm done. When I say I'm done, I'm literally done. I'm done. Your money has finished since. I just added some money to it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's it. I've talked about how you can be led. I've talked about the leading of the Holy Spirit, the leading of your human spirit. And I've told you about dreams that you need to check when you dream by the Holy Spirit also. If not, just discard that nonsense because there are many sources of dreams. Mr. Femi was still saying the same thing at YMCS on Wednesday. There are so many sources of dreams. God has called me. How did I know? I had a dream. When ministry starts beating you up, you have another dream. That dream will tell you get out. That's what you will see in that dream. So be sure of the source of your dreams. Bow down your head, everyone. Let us pray. One minute. I want you to just ask God to speak to you clearly without any ambiguity. Talk to God yourself. Talk to God yourself that you hear from God. You hear from God. You hear from God. The hearing here, the seeing high.